Have you ever wondered how the world manages to produce over 300 million tons of salt each year? Enough to blanket the entire Sahara Desert with a half-meter thick layer? They may seem like tiny crystals, but salt is a chemical foundation of life. Maintaining water balance, enabling nerve transmission, and protecting the cells of all living beings. From coastal salt flats to deep underground mines, salt is harvested, refined, and packaged, becoming both a familiar seasoning and a vital ingredient in modern industry. In today's video, join us as we explore the extraordinary journey of sea salt. From the blue droplets of the ocean to the white gold that has nourished the world. For thousands of years, salt has existed alongside humanity, a mineral deeply connected to both sea and land. Today, about 30% of the world's salt is produced from the ocean, while 40% comes from vast underground salt mines. In this picture, China stands as the leading producer, generating over 70 million tons of salt annually, nearly one-third of the global output. From the expansive salt fields of Tianjin and Shandong to the coastal islands of Hainan, the country's salt production system is now fully mechanized, from automated harvesting to closed-loop refining and drying. Alongside industrial advancement, nature still preserves some of the planet's most magnificent crystal factories. Vibrant natural salt lakes spread across the continents. There are now over 400 of these natural salt lakes around the world, from South America to Africa and Oceania, attracting millions of visitors each year. But have you ever wondered how, from just a single drop of seawater, humans can produce millions of tons of pure salt? Right now, Let's return to the very place where salt is born. Every December, as the dry season begins, the coastal salt fields enter their preparation phase for a new production cycle. Salt workers start by renovating the entire pond system, dredging mud, leveling the surface, and reinforcing the dikes to retain seawater. The pond bottoms are either lined with dark cement or compacted with clay, which not only prevents seepage but also enhances heat absorption, allowing evaporation to occur two to three times faster than on natural soil. When the salt fields are ready, the workers open the sluice gates, letting the first streams of seawater flow in. Under the blazing sun and the salty winds from the open sea, the greenish water is pumped through a network of shallow channels, winding its way into each pond. Every operation is precisely calculated. Only when the tide reaches its highest point does the water reach a salinity of about 3 to 5 percent, the ideal level for later crystallization. In the settling ponds, the water is kept for 24 to 72 hours to allow sand, silt, and natural algae to settle. The workers then use a refractometer to check the salinity before opening the valves to let the water continue into the concentration ponds. In the concentration ponds, the magical interplay of sunlight and wind begins. Under heat exceeding 30 degrees Celsius, each molecule of water slowly evaporates, leaving behind a solution that grows ever more concentrated. Each pond varies in depth, surface area and evaporation time, arranged in sequence to gradually increase salinity from 5% to over 25%. Walking along the pond edges, the salt workers listen to the wind and observe the color of the water, shifting from deep blue to milky white, a sign that crystallization is near. In modern salt farms, automatic sensors measure salinity and water levels by the hour. But in traditional ones, it is still the worker's experience and keen observation that serve as the most precise technology. Did you know that in the long journey from seawater to the white crystals of the ocean, there is a single moment that determines everything, the crystallization stage, the very heart of the entire sea salt production process? When the brine reaches a saturation level of about 26%, it is directed into the crystallization ponds, 
shallow basins only 3 to 5 centimeters deep, with flat, mirror-like surfaces lined with dark cement or tightly compacted clay to prevent seepage and maximize heat absorption. Under the scorching sunlight, the pond floor can reach up to 50 dugig cell Celsius, causing 6 to 8 millimeters of water to evaporate each day, leaving behind the first delicate layers of salt crystals clinging to the bottom. At first, they appear as a thin film, gradually thickening and turning pure white like crystal as the crystallization process reaches its completion. After nearly two months of hard work under the scorching sun, when the fields have dried and are covered with a shimmering layer of white crystals, the harvest season officially begins. Across fields stretching to the horizon, salt workers use bamboo rakes and aluminum shovels to gather the layers of white salt, pushing them gradually toward the edges. Every movement must be precise and steady to avoid scratching the pond floor, which could affect the next harvest. Once collected, the salt is piled into cone-shaped mounds over a meter high, left to drain naturally for 24 to 48 hours before being transported for refining. In countries like Vietnam, India, and Senegal, the image of salt workers wearing conical hats and raking salt under the blazing sun has become an enduring symbol of the trade. Meanwhile, in modern salt fields such as those in Tianjin, China, or Australia, harvesting is carried out by automatic salt harvesters. When sensors detect that the salt's moisture content has dropped below 4%, Rotary rakes or suction conveyors begin operating, gathering the salt into long rows before loading it onto trucks or conveyor belts that transport it directly to the refining plant. Each machine can process between 30 and 50 tons of salt per hour, reducing the harvest time for an entire field spanning dozens of hectares to just a few hours. Seeing these massive mountains of salt, one can't help but wonder, does taking so much salt from the sea make the ocean any less salty? Beyond the dazzling white salt fields under the sun, did you know that salt is also mined in other places on Earth? The answer lies deep underground, where massive salt cities exist. Like the Goderich Mine in Canada, an underground labyrinth stretching for dozens of kilometers. Each year, this mine produces more than 7 million tons of salt, enough to cover the entire North American highway system during the winter. It is a silent world without sunlight, Yet it preserves a mineral resource that has existed since the ancient oceans more than 400 million years ago. A day in the salt mine doesn't begin with sunrise, but with a 500 meter long elevator ride that takes workers deep underground. At that depth, they move through highway-sized tunnels in specialized trucks, traveling between vast salt chambers. The work begins when engineers operate continuous miners, massive machines over 15 meters long, equipped with dozens of steel teeth that cut through solid rock, releasing hundreds of tons of salt every hour. All operations follow the room and pillar method, in which enormous pillars of salt are deliberately left standing as natural supports. These pillars not only maintain the stability of the geological structure, but also form an intricate network of mining tunnels stretching for many kilometers. Once the salt is cut from the walls, it falls to the mine floor, where large bucket loaders or conveyor belts collect it and transfer it into underground haul trucks with a capacity of 30 to 40 tons. At the primary crusher station located within the mine, the salt blocks are crushed into smaller pieces, measuring 20 to 50 millimeters, making them easier to transport to the surface. Dust is controlled using a mist spray system, while the entire tunnel network is ventilated under pressure to ensure a safe working environment. After crushing, the salt is transported to the surface using a skip hoist or an inclined conveyor belt. The automated system operates continuously, ensuring a steady flow of salt to enormous dome-shaped storage facilities. From there, the salt is either distributed to refining plants or shipped directly for use in road de-icing, chemical production, 
and food processing industries. After being harvested, the journey of salt, whether from the sea or from deep underground, enters the stage of large-scale industrial transportation. In coastal salt fields, the dried salt is gathered into large heaps, then front loaders and mobile conveyors transfer it onto heavy-duty trucks or barges for delivery to refining plants. In many countries such as China, India, and Vietnam, the sight of white salt convoys driving along coastal roads has become an iconic image of the harvest season. Meanwhile, in underground mines like Goderich in Canada or Winsford in the UK, cranes with clamshell buckets and automated conveyors load salt onto trucks or cargo ships. Each shipment can carry between 10,000 and 20,000 tons of salt, bound for destinations around the world. From chemical factories in Europe to snow-covered highways across North America. Inside modern salt refining plants, the journey from raw crystals to pure, refined salt begins with a fully enclosed cleaning and impurity removal process. After being transported from coastal fields or underground mines, the raw salt is poured into feed hoppers and carried along vibrating conveyors, where soil, sand, and metal particles are removed using electromagnetic separators and multi-layer mechanical sieves. Next, the salt is washed with a saturated brine solution, a globally used technique that removes impurities without dissolving the crystals, thanks to differences in density. In the following stage, the salt is centrifuged to remove excess water, then fed into rotary dryers, where hot air at around 120 to 150 degrees Celsius reduces the moisture content to below 0.5%, ensuring the grains are crisp and free-flowing. After drying, the salt is crushed and sieved according to grain size, producing various grades, coarse salt for industrial use, fine salt for food, and ultra-fine salt for medical or pharmaceutical applications. Before packaging, some of the salt is enriched with iodine or trace minerals using a precision mist spraying system to meet international nutritional standards. And perhaps you'll be surprised to know, even in the most advanced factories, salt remains a silent enemy of machinery, corroding metal faster than almost any other environment, even stainless steel. Can you guess why? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Once the salt has reached the desired purity and moisture levels, its final journey within the factory begins, the automatic packaging process. From intermediate storage silos, the salt is fed through screw conveyors into dosing hoppers, where electronic weight sensors precisely control every gram of material. Vertical form-fill seal machines, the most common technology used in salt factories worldwide, can pack 60 to 100 bags per minute, with weights ranging from 250 grams to 50 kilograms, depending on the production scale. The packaging material is usually made of multi-layer polypropylene film, moisture-resistant, pressure-durable, and pre-printed with QR codes and traceability information. Small bags are automatically grouped into bundles of 10 to 20 packs, while larger sacks are neatly stacked on wooden pallets, wrapped tightly in PE shrink film before being moved into storage. In large-scale factories in countries like China, India, and Egypt, the entire process, from dosing, sealing, and printing expiration dates to boxing, takes less than two minutes per cycle, thanks to fully automated PLC control systems and real-time monitoring by industrial cameras. In the treasure trove of traditional Asian medicine and macrobiotic practices, bamboo salt is considered a special type of salt. An essence of nature combined with traditional craftsmanship, it is meticulously made from entirely natural ingredients. First, unrefined sea salt rich in minerals is selected, then sun-dried and tightly packed into mature bamboo tubes aged three to five years, chosen for their thick walls and resistance to pests. Both ends of the bamboo tubes are sealed with yellow or red clay to prevent leakage during the firing process. These salt-filled bamboo tubes are then placed in a kiln and fired at high temperatures, ranging from 800 to 1500 degrees Celsius. The firing can be repeated multiple times, commonly once, three times, or nine times. The most prized variety is bamboo salt fired nine times, 
during which the salt melts into a solid mass and takes on a distinctive dark purple hue. After firing, the tubes are allowed to cool naturally, then broken open to extract the salt, which is crushed into powder or granules for use. This salt is believed to be not only exceptionally pure, but also energetically rich and beneficial to health. So, we've just completed the journey of sea salt from the salty waters of the deep blue ocean through the harsh sun and wind on the salt fields to the moment it crystallizes into sparkling crystal-like grains. Each grain of salt is more than just a seasoning. It is the result of a powerful blend between nature's intensity and the diligent hands of those who harvest it. If you enjoy journeys like this, where we explore the world through things that seem small but hold deep meaning, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one.